Welcome to the final video in our three-part series of how to make a responsive website. We have created this four-page site and got it finished in the previous two tutorials, but the only thing is we haven't made it responsive yet, which means we haven't made it compatible with mobile phones or tablets. Okay, if I was to resize my browser down to the size of a mobile phone screen, you can see that some of this picture up the top gets cut off, our menu bar becomes a bit deformed, our text doesn't look too bad down here, it still looks fine. As I go through some of these pages, uh, we'll have a look at gigs, oh, it's not too bad, it's mainly the home page, the picture down here gets cut off, and on every page as I just said the header section doesn't look too great. So it's our job to fix that up and make this responsive so that people on smaller devices can still look at this website without any issues. So what we're going to do is go over to brackets and we're going to begin by opening up our style sheet. All the coding for this last tutorial is done in our style sheet here. Okay. So at the bottom what we're going to do so we're going to start by putting in something called a media inquiry. So you do the at symbol and write media, and in brackets we set the max width to the size of a tablet screen, and that's about 768 pixels. All right, so we've got at media max width 768 pixels. So that means when we're viewing this website on a device that is 768 pixels at its maximum size or anything lower than that. Okay, So when our screen size gets smaller than 768 pixels width we need to tell it how it needs to change. There's not a lot that needs to change. Okay, The first thing I want to change, if I just go back to the sample site, is this top section, the spacer section. Now the spacer section basically just gives this image 400 pixels of height. So from the top of the page down to the bottom of the menu bar we want to make that a bit smaller. Okay, so what we do is we write dot spacer. You might remember up higher, right at the top of the page, we did this dot spacer and we set the height to 350 pixels. We're going to change that. Okay, so inside dot spacer, we open up a curly brace and we simply tell its height to change to 180 pixels and close that curly brace off. So now on any screen size, that's smaller than a tab or a tablet or smaller, the height will be 180 pixels for that big section at the top. Here watch this, if I resize it, I'm sorry, I'll just go back out here. So we're at a pretty big size there. If we get a bit smaller, that's height just dropped. So between there, that's 350 pixels height. When we get down to a tablet size, let's be a little bit smaller it changes its height to 180 pixels. Okay, that's the first change we've made. This text doesn't look too good. We'll get to that in just a moment. So back in brackets, the next thing we're going to change is the band name class. And that's what I was just looking at. The text is a little bit too big. So earlier on we had the band name quite large. Let's, like, let's have a look at what we had it at. So up the top, this is all the styling we had on the band name. Okay, 65 pixels, 1.5 85 em line spacing, so it was pretty big. We're going to change a few of those things there now. So in band name, let's change the font size first of all. We'll change the font size to 50 pixels. It's dropped it quite a bit. We'll change the padding. So that's the space at the top, so padding top. Move it down to 30 pixels. And the line height, we'll just squish that text in a bit closer together. 1.65 em. That's going to affect just that band name, or pretty much the logo over in the left hand corner. If we have a look at that now, it's fitting nicely at the smaller size. So at a larger size, text is size 60 odd, drop it down a bit. There we go, that's our new size there, at size 50. That's fitting in pretty nicely. Um, back into brackets now, we might change our H2 headings next. If you forget the H2 headings, that's these ones. We've got one of these on every page. Okay, so as we get a bit smaller, we'll make that writing a bit smaller too. So what I'm going to do, beneath band name, is simply change the H2 headings now. H2 headings, we'll write font-size, change to 2EM. At the moment it's 2.5EM on a normal computer screen. On a tablet screen, it will change to 2EM, so a little bit smaller. So watch this, it's at size 2EM there. If I get a bit bigger, it will go to 25 so things are starting to change now as we make our screen size smaller. It's starting to look a little bit nicer. Next thing we want to change is our menu. 
okay at the moment our menu looks great even on a tablet size it's not too bad but what I do want to do is put them in a long list so one on top of the other so I'm going to change my list items so put in your li tag open up a curly brace I'm going to drop the padding to five pixels and the other thing I'm going to do is display and set it to block and that will make them basically like building blocks one on top of the other we save that up and have a look that's what I'm talking about you can space it out that's very spread it out and you'll see that it goes back to its normal design on a desktop screen but on a tablet screen it's going to just be a little bit easier to click if they're one on top of the other in the block format and the last thing I want to change is on the home page which is this image it's a little bit too big okay so what we're going to do is just change our image tag so image and the max width of that image we're going to set it to about 430 pixels I've done a bit of trial and error and I found that size to be pretty decent so if I save that up and test it you can see now at the smaller size that picture fits in nicely on a tablet screen if I stretch it out it will just go back to its normal large size so we've got our tablets covered looks great when we get down to mobile screen sizes which are really small again we're cutting off Tom from this picture text is still a bit big and the picture again is getting cut off okay so we want to try and fix that issue so we've done our max width for 768 let's do it for even smaller than that so we'll do another media inquiry in our style sheet this time the max width is going to be 480 pixels which is roughly the width of a mobile phone screen so 480 pixels from there we're going to go down to the next line and we're going to open a curly brace oops I forgot to close a curly brace up above there so just close your curly brace here that's going to close off the media inquiry for 768 pixels down the bottom back to this one we have just opened up our curly brace for 480 pixels or a smartphone we're going to change everything we just changed up here pretty much okay so the dot spacer we're going to make even smaller instead of having 180 pixels height we're going to make this space uh, into a hundred pixels height so all right height 100 pixels close that quotation mark oh, sorry curly brace off so we've got our spacer here now 100 pixels height save it and test it okay so we're at about an iPad screen size here as we get down to the smartphone size you can see this picture just jumped down even smaller and Tom still fits on the screen just so if we get back a little bit bigger that looks pretty good that's roughly a mobile phone screen size go to a tablet it gets a little bit taller go to a desktop screen size and it becomes even bigger okay so at this mobile phone screen size it's not looking too bad this text though is still too big so let's change the text next of all oh, so we'll go below the spacer here and we'll write dot band name let's get it suitable for a mobile phone so for a mobile phone we're going to change the font size first of all down to 30 pixels I'm getting pretty small now the padding top we're going to change that to 15 pixels and the line height 1.5 am save that up we'll test it out that's our text there now at a mobile phone screen size nice and small fitting beautifully into that left hand corner okay it's looking good menu bar is fine we don't need to touch that okay it's just carrying over the code that we wrote in a little bit earlier just here on our tablet screen size I think it still looks fine at the mobile phone screen size so we'll leave it the same as the tablet size uh, what else can we change the h2 heading we changed that earlier so let's change that again now so below the band name just write H2, open up your curly braces, change the font size, we'll make it 1.5 EM. So that's one and a half times the usual size. And finally, this picture down here. That's a bit of an issue. Okay, we need to make that fit in at our mobile phone screen size. So we make an image up. And for the image, we're going to set the max width to about 350 pixels. We know that the mobile phone screen size is about 480 pixels so if we make it 350 pixels 
got plenty of room for it to fit inside to our mobile phone screen size. Once you've done that, just close the curly brace off down here, which will close our media inquiry for a mobile phone screen. Save it up, test it out. So we've got our desktop screen size, tablet screen size, and we get down to a mobile phone screen size, and all our pictures are fitting in nicely. Menus easy to click on. The only issue we've got a little bit is our table's a bit off on our smart screen size, our smartphone screen size, but it's not a major issue. I think it still looks fine and it's readable. We don't want to make our text any smaller than 1 EM. Other than that, it gets a little bit too hard to read on a mobile phone screen, so we still leave it a reasonable size. Everything else is working great. One last thing I do want to add in to our code is something called comments. Okay, and comments help. Um, when somebody else is reading your code, basically. So what I'm going to do, if we look at the bottom of our code where we did this media inquiry, this is where our, our changes are made for smartphone screen sizes. Just above that media max width line, I'm going to put in a forward slash and a asterisk. And I'm going to write smartphone screen size. Then I'm, at the end I'm going to put an asterisk and another forward slash. And you'll see some grey text appear. And that's basically a comment. It's not actually code. It's just a bit of helpful um, writing that's inside your code that tells people anything below there is going to change our website for a smartphone screen. Okay, so we'll make it adaptable for a smartphone. That's going to say that's a bit further up. We've got this media inquiry for tablets. Okay, so what I'm going to do above that media inquiry is do the same again, a forward slash, asterisk, and write, uh, what do I write for the bottom one, smartphone screen size, we'll write tablet, Oops. tablet screen size. You don't have to write this in capital letters, I'm just doing it to help it stand out a little bit. So now, all this writing below that comment should change our tablet screen size. Okay. So it's just a helpful piece of writing that tells people when they're reading our code what this piece of code is actually doing. Let's go at the top and have a look. We might want to add something up here. So we already know what HTML does. It makes our background black. That's pretty straightforward. Anyone can see that. Um, the body section we don't really need a comment for. People understand that pretty easily. The header section though, you might want to put a comment in for and say, add an image Oops, banner across the top of the page. That's pretty much what that code is doing. Okay, so this little section of code here basically adds an image or a banner actually across the top of the page. It also changes the text color and a couple of little things like that, but that's the main thing it does. For the spacer, if you want to add a comment there, you might write in something like so forward slash asterisk um, set the height of the banner. Okay. I'm not going to go any further there, but this is really good practice to add some comments into your code. So if somebody else needs to come back and edit your web page for some reason and you're not around, at least you've got comments in there to help them out and tell them what piece of code is doing what exactly. You don't just have to do it in your style sheet either. You can come across to so your contact page. And on your contact page, let's go down to this footer section at the bottom. Now the way we do comments in HTML is we do a pointy bracket, exclamation mark, and two minus signs or two dashes. And we write our comment in, so I'll write displays a copyright statement at bottom of page. Then we do two minus signs and a pointy bracket again. So that is a comment in HTML. And that just tells people below there, we're adding a footer in. Maybe up in this section, we'll need to have a comment where we put our social media icons in. So add in social media icons. Actually, probably don't even need to write add in. We'll just write social media icons. And we'll do two dashes and a pointy bracket to close that comment. That there now, it's not part of our code. As I said before, it's a helpful piece of writing that tells people what is going on in our code. It's not everyone understands this code very well, so it's good to have comments in plain English that tells people what's going on. 
Okay, if we want, we could put one here. I'll just do a few on this page so you get the idea. In our article section, which is the main text, just say, oops, main body text. Okay, and simply below the main body text, here's our main body text. Here's our menu bar, so let's put in a comment saying menu bar. And then up the top here, we've got our banner and our text in the corner. So let's add in a comment saying logo, text, and banner. Okay, so we've got something describing what's going on straight below it. Very handy to have comments in your code and you will be marked on this in your assignment. So make sure you add some simple comments into your HTML and also in your CSS. Just be aware of the way we write them though. So in CSS we've got that forward slash and an exclamation mark to open and close a comment. And in our HTML pages we have this pointy bracket, exclamation mark and two dashes to open it up. Two dashes and a pointy bracket to close our comment. Okay, so go through your code now on all four pages plus your CSS and start adding in some comments. Just short ones here and there to tell people and explain what's going on in your code. Once you've done that, save it all up. You've now finished your first responsive website.